All gave some, some gave all. Some would march on, others would fall. There are no winners in war when you consider the cost. You cannot justify the thousands of lives for our own that were lost. Wars leave scars that in time may fade, but not without taking a toll. However, the deepest wounds are those that scar the very heart and soul. For those that saw action during wartime, I'm sure without a doubt, they've had to live with the memories of fallen comrades, their brothers, someone they cared deeply about, and all the families left behind with only their memories to carry them through also paying the price of freedom won for me and you. We are all aware that times have changed, and yet there are certain things we must never forget. Be proud of our flag, and long may she wave, and long may we remember what so many gave. I am Ken Stenko. Uh, I was living in Ainsworth, Nebraska when I enlisted into the Army National Guard. Uh, I enlisted in 1983 at the age of 17. I was a junior in high school uh, and, and I went to basic training during my junior year. I served in the Iraq War in uh, Balad, Iraq uh, during the Iraq War and uh, in 2006, 2007, and I now live in Stewart, Nebraska. What was our biggest challenge uh, and reward while on active duty? I would have to say the biggest, uh, probably the biggest reward that I have is uh, being able to de deploy with my unit, uh, the 755th Chemical. It was very rewarding to spend a year with them overseas and then be able to come back to my family. Why did I pick the Army National Guard? Um, the Army National Guard offers a lot of opportunities that uh, um, are very versatile with the uh, with the military. Uh, you can join the Army National Guard as as a part-time soldier and uh, kind of feel feel the waters a little bit. And if you decide you want to go full-time. Uh, you can easily transition to the uh, full-time component. What makes you the most proud to be a part of the service? Probably, uh, I would say my family. Um, they they had su supported me uh, throughout my military service, and they continue to support me in the job that I'm in today as a as a veteran service officer serving veterans. Coming back from the military. Uh, I had a different outlook on my family, uh, although um, my family was excited to have me back. Um, I think my wife had mentioned several times that, uh, that your family is not your military troops, so you can't talk to us that way. Um, although it does give you structure in your life today, um, and, and it, is, it is the reason I am once again here in this job as a veteran service officer. Would I recommend the youth to consider the service? Absolutely. Uh, so many of the youth uh, today uh, do not know what they are going to do once they get out of high school. Um, not only the Army National Guard, but the military service, service gives them an option, uh, gives them a place to go, uh, gives them security, and it gives them, gives them uh, a goal, gives them a gives them a job title and it gives them uh, confidence coming out of the military to move through life. It give me structure, it give me guidance, it give me, um, give me the strength, it give me uh, confidence to, to know that I can, I can just about do anything that, that the world throws at me. So uh, I would not train anything in the world for, for my military service. Thank you. I am Mick McIntyre. I was living in O'Neill, Nebraska uh, when I enlisted into the uh, United States Marine Corps, uh, and that was in uh, later 89, uh, October of 89. 
Uh, at the age of 19, I was in uh, service for 22 years and I retired. Uh, initially, I was in Camp Pendleton for about three years. I got transferred to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I spent about three and a half years in, in uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And then I got transferred back to uh, 29 Palms, California, which is out in the Mojave Desert next to uh, uh, north, northwest of Palm Springs area. So I spent about 10 years total there, not all collectively at one time. I uh, did other tours in North Carolina, Columbus, Ohio, uh, and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma as well. Um, I served uh, in the Persian Gulf War initially, and then also I, I served in the uh, Iraqi Freedom as well. I uh, did one tour there. Uh, for my service, I think one of the biggest challenge was uh, was being at one place for uh, three years and then having to move about bas basically every three to four years. So uh, as you develop a family, you don't, you don't have the opportunity to uh, establish roots in the community and, and basically uh, for your kids being in school, uh, you know, picking, up, picking them up every three to four years. Uh, it was very, very difficult for them. Uh, and then being in the military as well, you don't spend much time with your, with your family to begin with. Uh, that kind of raised the flag for me to, to retire was so I could see my, my kids through high school. In, in regard to uh, pranks, uh, we had, uh, me and uh, other staff and COs, uh, we had a uh, admin chief that was very concerned about his weight all the time. He was always jumping on the scale and telling us how much he, uh, how many pounds he had lost, and and so one of the other staff sergeants came came to me, and we worked together pretty, we were pretty tight, and uh, uh, so he came up with the idea of about every three to four weeks we'll trim a little bit off his belt. Uh, so we had the old web belt, so you could undo the, the the buckle. We could just trim a little bit off about every three to four weeks. And after about six months, he he came became really concerned about his weight. He didn't understand why his waist was getting, why his waist was getting bigger. And, uh, and that was about, about a six month process. And finally we, we uh, let the cat out of the bag and told, told him what was going on. And he was, uh, he was very upset about the whole situation. And uh, uh, he found out, we, we told him what, what we came up with. And, and one morning we came in the office and uh, the other staff sergeant's desk was full of sand. Every drawer was topped off with sand, and <laughs> even on top of his desk and computer, everything was just uh, covered in sand. So it was, that was, that was kind of a, a funny deal. Then the next time, he, so he retaliated against him, and and we were always in the Toys for Tots program. The Marine, Marine Corps always runs the Toys for Tots. So he took uh, Toys for Tot, Tots stickers and pins and plastered his desk and everything on his computer, and it was. <laughs> it was good fun, and I hope that uh, young people today continue to strive to join the service and, and be a part of what, what, whatever may be next. So. I'm Dan Kino, and I was living in Norfolk when I enlisted in the Army uh, in 1999 at the age of 20. And I served for 22, a little over 22 years, and recently just retired out of the Army Reserves. Um, and most of that time, it was in the Army Reserves, and uh, during the Global War on Terror. I did tours in, two tours to Iraq and one to Afghanistan.
Now I live in Winnetin. What motivated me to join the service was it's just something I thought if I never did it, I would always regret not doing it. And just to kind of get out and see the world, get out of the Northeast Nebraska and see what else was out there. And uh, initially I wanted to join the Marines and I walked into the recruiting station and uh, the Marines weren't there. They, they only came a couple days a month. So I was about to walk out and the army guy poked his head out the door and I was probably one of the easiest recruits uh, he ever got because I, I wanted to go in. And, um, so that's how I ended up joining the army and I was active duty for four years and then went over to the reserve side. And while I was active duty, um, I was a 12 Bravo, which is a combat engineer. Um, they do a lot of demolitions, things like that. And now, now they use them for route clearance, um, looking for IEDs along roads in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, I've also have been in, in the supply system um, and the petroleum supply, 92 Fox. Um, so that's what I retired. I was in 92 Fox, which is petroleum supply. Um, the worst day I can remember in the services, uh, probably actually two, was 9-11. Uh, I remember that day really clear. I was stationed at Fort Riley um, when that happened and they locked the post down and everyone was you know, huddled around the radios and the TVs to see what was happening and everyone was guessing what was going to happen and where we were going to go if we were going to war. And it was kind of scary and I don't, I don't know if it's funny or what, but I was a private at that time. and. Uh, while everyone was listening to what's going on, I was told, well, well you, why don't you go out and mow the lawn? So I had to, I had to mow, mow the lawn while all that was happening. I thought that was kind of unfair. But, um, and the other bad day um, was when I was in Afghanistan, um, as a 12 Bravo doing route clearance, um, we hit an IED um, and our vehicle was blown up. Um, I was injured and was medevaced, um, the driver, he was also injured very severely and got medevaced. Um, and that was a pretty bad day. I remember that day pretty vividly as well. Um, as far as what I do differently, um, going back to that, that explosion, um, saw the guys, they were hiding in the bushes and, um, you know, we have rules of engagement we had to follow. They were, uh, are they a uh, credible threat? Do they have a hostile intent? Um, and if they didn't fall into those categories, well, then we weren't supposed to fire. And at that time, I told the gunner, I was the vehicle commander, I said, just keep an eye on them. And uh, seconds after I said that, um, we were blown up. So, you know, what if I had said, pull the trigger? But, you know, who knows? Um, so, yeah, that's, Something I think about a lot, um, but it is what it is. So I'm still here and everyone in the vehicle survived. So I guess that was a good thing. I am Gordon Fox. I was living in O'Neill, Nebraska when I enlisted into the Army National Guard. We had a company here in O'Neill. Uh, in my senior year in high school, 1957, at age 17. I was in the service uh, for 28 years. Most of my time served was in a variety of locations uh, during the uh, primarily Vietnam War. I now live back in O'Neill after being gone for 42 years. I picked the branch of service first. I just enlisted in the Army National Guard but when I went to the University of Nebraska, at uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, I was in the Air Force ROTC. And so when I graduated from the university, I was uh, commissioned into the Air Force. And so I spent the rest of my time in the Air Force. Uh, the best time, I guess, the, lots of good times in the service, but uh, day that I graduated from uh, Air Force pilot training, Advanced Air Force Base, was a, a neat day. 
And yes, I made a lot of close friends in the uh, Air Force, and several of them I stay in contact with. I uh, also went to the Air Force Institute of Technology in Ohio, made good friends there, and a year and a half I spent in, in that service. And then in pilot training, and several of those uh, people I stay in touch with. Uh, lost several uh, servicemen while uh, in the Air Force. Vietnam was going on at the time. Three of my pilot training classmates uh, were killed in action, missing in action, and other friends uh, ended up being missing in action during that time. And also uh, in pilot training, uh, lost uh, instructor pilot, killed in an aircraft accident, uh, and other people that were killed. What do uh, I tell young people what a veteran is stands for? I think the veteran stands for freedom. Freedom ensured by the millions of veterans that served and uh, just ensured that we have the freedom in this country to do what we want to do. And most countries do not have that. Uh, I think our country stands for national strength, demonstrated by when we go into other countries, not necessarily to conquer them, but to assist them. And then it stands for goodness of our nation. We go places to help people after disasters. Most countries don't do that. Would I recommend today's youth to consider this service? Yes, I think it broadens your uh, whole scope in life. It uh, also is a service to our country. Depending on what you do during the service, you gain an awful lot of information and abilities that will serve you the rest of your life. My name is Bob Irwin. I was living in O'Neill when I enlisted in the United States Navy. At the age of 19, I was in service for four years, located aboard the ship USS Toledo Heavy Cruiser. I was during the Korean War. I now live in O'Neill. I was a teletype operator and copied uh, teletype, repaired teletype, and also did a little mail carrying. What was your most enjoyable time in the service? I was going out on Liberty and bar hopped, I guess. Well, I seen Bob Hope and his crew. I got to see the ink spots. Also got some pictures of uh, Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio and uh, the harmonicats and there was one more but I can't think of it right now. They were a colored group. It's a lot of the things that I enjoyed while I was in there. But I really enjoyed the Navy. I might have even made a career out of it, but they put my ship in mothballs. Uh, at the same time, so I got out. I did spend one year on Kwajalein, and they had an atomic bomb test there while I was there, but <coughs> there were no real bad days that I can think of. Okay. It was over in Korea and bombarding and that there, but it didn't affect me any. Well, I think the best moments is when I was seeing the entertainers, you know, especially Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio, because we were invited up to their room and took pictures. Um, I don't know whether many people today know who she is and who Joe DiMaggio was, but he was played for the Yankees. Baseball. Real nice guy. Had some good visits with him. Me and a couple of my buddies. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Not really.
My name is Roger Folkers. <clears throat> I was living in Osmond, Nebraska, where I currently live today, when I enlisted into the United States Army in December 31st, 1976, at the age of 17. Um, I did that to get the good GI Bill. Uh, my long-term plan was to go to school. I actually went to basic training on my 18th birthday, September 14th, 1977. I was in the service for five years, 11 months, and 23 days. I re-enlisted once. Uh, most of my time, two tours in Korea, two and a half years at Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland, and about 11 months at Fort Hood, Texas. I was motivated to join the service kind of by economic reasons. Uh, in 76, there wasn't a lot going on, and my mom and dad really didn't have a lot of money to uh, pay for college. And this was a way where I could get some money saved up, see the world, and, uh, and use the good GI Bill. But it, it became a lot more than that once I got in there. Um, as I've grown older, I, I appreciated my time more as far as uh, serving my country, which at 18 you don't think a lot about it, but as you grow older you do. Um, basic training. <laughs> I still remember my drill sergeants, Drill Sergeant John Henry Sledge and Drill Sergeant Indy. Um, they, one of them was from South Alabama and one was from Oklahoma. And they were tough old boys. Both of them had been to Vietnam and uh, had the combat infantry badge. They had the credentials and uh, learned a lot from them. I think basic was a little different back then. Uh, drill Sergeant Sledge basically told you if you thought you, you wanted to take issue with what he did, he was more than happy to oblige you um, out behind the barracks, but they were good leaders and good soldiers, and I learned a lot from them. My most rewarding moment in the service was probably in 1982. I was stationed over at the United Nations Command Support Group Joint Security Area in Panmunjom, Korea, and I was sent to a four-week leadership class and uh, I, I got the Distinguished Graduate Award from that class. Uh, and uh, when I went back to the unit, you know, I made the unit look good. And I was happy to get that. But at that point, then I was promoted to, to sergeant. And uh, that was a big thing. So most rewarding moment, yeah, would definitely be probably over at, at uh, the Joint Security Area. Uh, as far as... Close friends, yes, you make a lot of friends in the service. Uh, I've got friends in Michigan, I've got friends in Washington that I served with during those six years. And uh, we still stay in touch. Social media maybe ain't the greatest, but it's good for that. Uh, you can find the guys that you served with and, and see the kind of lives they're living. And most of us, we turned out pretty good. I got out of the service in August of 1983 I'd already pre-enrolled at what is now University of Nebraska at Kearney. Uh, back then it was Kearney State. And I obtained in four years a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and a minor in English. Um, after I graduated, I moved to California and worked a job out there for about a year. Kind of missed Nebraska, believe it or not. So uh, I came home. And I got a job at Boys Town as an assistant family teacher where I worked for three years. At that point in time, I was 31 years old and thought, maybe I better find something with a retirement. So I, I applied for the Nebraska State Patrol and had a very rewarding, was accepted and hired and had a good 28-year career with them. And I'm now retired from the Nebraska State Patrol. And the military service, it affects your job and your life after leaving in so many ways. Um, my fellow uh, veterans, you know, down at Post 326 in Osmond, uh, just the discipline that you learn, uh, the attention to detail, the appreciation for our country, you know, living, being stationed for almost two and a half years in Korea, we have a great standard of living and this is the greatest country in the world. Um, you see people that don't even have running water, uh, that live a standard of living that we couldn't imagine. So I have an appreciation for what God has blessed me with in this world. As far as how veterans are viewed today, you know, 
from one veteran to another, uh, everybody respects each other. But I think sometimes, uh, I would like to say maybe, you know, our government doesn't take care of the vets the way they should. We, we have, in my mind, abysmal veterans health care. Uh, just homeless vets on the street, 22 veterans a day committing suicide. I think this country could do better taking care of our veterans. I'm not saying you got to be there for them because we're not victims, but there's some problems out there that I feel I'd like to see our country deal with as far as veterans because the veterans did their thing. They, they served their country and we deserve, we don't deserve, but we've earned a modicum of respect. I'm Tim Greger and uh, I was living in Creighton, Nebraska when I enlisted into the Air Force in 1977 at the age of 18. I spent 40 years in the military, retiring in 2017, serving in the Air Force, the Nebraska Air National Guard, Army National Guard, and the Army. 23 of those 40 years I served as a medevac helicopter pilot, where I deployed four times to the Middle East, each deployment lasting up to one year. All my deployments were completed as a member of the Nebraska Army National Guard. Serving in the National Guard, you serve a dual mission, if, if you will. The National Guard deploys overseas, but also responds to all state declared emergencies here in the United States. As I mentioned earlier, I spent many years in the service and retired in 2017. After retiring from the service, and my other career with the Natural Resource Conservation Service after 31 years, I ran for office as a Nebraska State Senator, where I have been serving for the past three years. My military service helped me in many ways, but most of all, it has helped me to realize what is important to embrace in life. And for me, that is faith, family, and the flag. Serving as a state senator, there are some tough decisions to be made. I personally make them by keeping my faith and always remembering the families that decision may affect. And as for the flag, it is our greatest symbol of freedom we have today in the United States of America. Most definitely, I would recommend our youth to join the service today. There are many great opportunities while serving in the military. One of the greatest for me was the opportunity to see the world. Through the service, I had the opportunity to visit all seven continents seen some amazing places, and had some awesome experiences. However, after traveling all parts of the world, there is still no place I would rather live than in the United States of America. Besides the travel in the military, it is a great place to get an education, to complete a career in the military, or to set yourself up for a career in the private sector. The National Guard is a great way to experience military life and opportunities without having to leave Nebraska. Some of the worst days I had in the military were the days I had to say goodbye to my family before my deployments. And of course, the four of the best days in the military was when I was united back with my family after my deployments. Serving in the National Guard, you become more than friends. It's like a second family. Serving on active duty, I did make great friends. But unfortunately, I haven't stayed in touch like I should have. It was an honor for me to be able to serve in the military and be part of defending our great nation. More specific for me, I had the most rewarding job in the military as a crew member for the medevac mission. I am most proud to have served as a medevac helicopter pilot and being able to use my God-given talents to rescue and save the lives of our wounded soldiers. I am an American by birth and a veteran by choice and couldn't be more proud. God bless America. And on closing, I just want to convey our appreciation and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, veterans, and to those who shared their stories and for standing up for old glory. We all know freedom isn't free. There's a huge price paid for all our liberties. God bless America, land of our birth, and God bless America, the greatest nation on earth.